All right, good morning. It is another beautiful day out here in the desert, and I'm going to do a tour of my campsite. So welcome to my campsite. All right, so today I'm going to give you a little tour of our campsite. A lot of people want to know what is going on out here. I'll have friends that come over just to look at what I have going on. So we're going to give a little tour. I already got cleaned up for you guys today because I knew this was going to happen. And uh, let's get started. So what's different is I have way more stuff than I normally have. Uh, Normally, I wouldn't have all these animals, I wouldn't have all these house plants, I wouldn't have all this stuff, and it is um, a little bit overwhelming sometimes when I think about it. Uh, it's not an easy thing to move all of this stuff, uh, but what I thought about is if I left anything behind, I would never forgive myself and I would think about that forever. So I just buckle down and go ahead and deal with it for right now. So our main living area is still the van. That's where our kitchenette is and our bed and a little bit of a living area. And we've had the tent before, but now it is filled with my house plants. And as you can see, we have some of the house plants outside here, getting a little bit of sun, got a little bit of a shade structure going on for the plants and for the animals that are all here next to the van, being kept in the partially, partially sun, partially shade. They like the sun. All right, so here is animal number one, Oreo the rabbit. She was free. I got her free, so... Couldn't pass her up. Had her for about three years, I think, now. And uh, they have these nice large cages that they're out during the day, and they can go into a smaller one at night for safety. There's rabbit number two. Used to be named Honey Bun, but now I guess Peanut Butter. I don't know. He's a very nice rabbit. He can come out and play, and again, he's got a nice large cage and can go into a smaller one at night for safety. All right, so this is what we have for the chickens. It is like a little chicken pen, rabbit play pen. It's made out of the same wire that the dog crates are, and... It has, I have a tarp over it, and then they are inside here. I have five chickens, these brown ones. Those two, they're about seven years old. These black ones, I'd say, are about four years old. I've had them for a long time. So a lot of these chickens we've had for a really long time, and I just couldn't let them go. But what's even more crazy is they started laying a bunch of eggs out here. I've been getting eggs every day, which is awesome. So I think they like the environment. So like I said, they are in this crate, and it's pretty good size. They have plenty of room for five of them, and I have this tarp and these little stakes here to hold it down so the wind doesn't blow it away. I can pull the tarp back if they want a little bit more sun. You know, if it's cool out, they do like to lay in the sun, and um, it did come with a tarp. I'll put a link for the Amazon uh, link for this. It was about $100, and... Uh, this folds up and went in the back of the van. All right, so how we keep everybody safe is they are right next to the van. And the dog is here, and she's outside until dark. Um, she should be able to hear if anything comes into our, quote, yard. And just to kind of make a little bit of extra barrier, I have this rope and I'll put like my bike here and I have some other stuff. So it kind of makes it a little bit 
harder to get in there without making any noise. So hopefully uh, Sheba would hear that. But um, again, they're right next to the van. They're staying in the cages and to stay safe. All right, next is going inside our tent, which is now AKA the greenhouse. It is loaded with all of my house plants that normally would not be traveling. So a lot of these house plants I had to bring along. I sell at a farmer's market, so I propagate off of the house plants and some of them I have made dozens of more that I've sold, so they make money. So like this house plan here, it broke off a baby and I can plant that and make another one. A lot of these house plants, they uh, stayed outside during the summer and I didn't really need to water them in Missouri. There was plenty of rain and stuff. So sometimes somebody would have to just empty the water out of the saucers. And then in the winter, uh, they were inside my other house. And they just needed water every now and then, and they had full sun inside the house, and that was it. So now that they are with me, it's a whole different ball game. Some of these ho house plants I've had for 20 years. <laughs> and I think they're enjoying it. I got flowers that have been going on for a long time. Look at this one's got flowers there and there. Uh, this one over here has got flowers all over it. There's some down there. So, yeah, my tent is being called a greenhouse right now. And it has been, we started kind of off in the 20s because we were camping in New Mexico and it's, and it's January. And uh, so at first it was pretty chilly and I had to babysit and get up in the night and uh, make sure everything stayed warm enough. And to do that, of course, I had the buddy heater and I had a hose to a larger propane tank. And I would sometimes when it was not real cold, I would just leave it on the pilot light for a little while. And then gradually like the low one time I did have to run it for several hours on high at night. During those really cold times, the tank only lasted about a week. So now we are in uh, Arizona outside of Tucson and it is warmer. So right now I'm getting up at maybe like 1, 2 a.m. and I'm turning the heater on low, trying to keep it at least in the 40s in here. It has got it in the 30s, which is a little bit too cold for some of the plants, but um, I'm doing the best I can. It's So I have a separate heat just for in here and then the diesel heater is what is heating the van. And just in case you haven't seen the video with my tent, it has these little windows that zip down and it's giving some light for all the plants that I'm leaving inside. Um, you know, check this out. I got uh, a lemon, which usually goes dormant. I'm not sure if it's gonna actually give me, give me any lemons. There's a few there. It had flowers and stuff. Um, usually they drop off, so we'll see. Uh, but the tent has uh, the windows, so I leave some of the plants in here. It's high enough here that my palm tree, which is eight feet tall, can just barely fit in here. <laughs> which you can see. I got, here's my hand all the way, all the way up to the top of the tent. So this thing fit in my car like 15 years ago from Florida. <laughs> that I bought and now it now it doesn't and I have a banana over here it's kind of beat up and not looking the best right now but it'll recover the leaves got beat up on the on the van ride you know so all of these plants were inside the van underneath my bed I had crates I had some stacked in crates on top of each other and this is not typical this is not normal it's not an easy thing either you know it's like you see it all set up. This was all inside of the van. The tent was on the back of the van and a few other things. One cage was on the back of the van. But other than that, this is, you know, this is a little bit uh, um, unusual of a situation and definitely not something easy that I can want to continue to do on a long term. 
you know, some of these plants are quite heavy and uh, not easy to move in and out and then to try to keep the cats like in the van and stuff while, while I'm doing that. So we are taking full advantage of our full 14 days when we go places because we know how much, because I know how much work it is to move all this stuff. Um, but like I said, the animals, we couldn't leave them behind and, um, uh, the, the plants can't leave them behind either. And it just, we got thrown in the situation really quickly. So I wasn't as prepared, didn't have a whole lot of backup plans and just everything had to come with us. And, uh, we're trying to, I'm trying to make the best of it and keep everything alive and warm and safe. And uh, that's what we're doing. I have some LED lights that I can plug in a battery box and they are strung all the way through here. So this can be all lit up at night and you can kind of see what, what's going on too when you come out. And then you've seen this before. Here's our shower potty tent. We can put the toilet in there, take the toilet out and use it for our shower tent. And uh, we'll just do the shower bag, the solar shower and uh, somebody's gonna be taking a shower today, Adele is. I already took mine, that's why that's out. And uh, hung this little thing up here because uh, we do have a few neighbors now and sometimes you can see through the tent like it's opaque or something. So uh, we got our flag hanging up there and uh, here's the outside of the tent. We can kind of see the windows but you can't really see in. Here's the separate solar panel, 50 watts, that I use to power our, or charge my battery box. And uh, there's the heater, and it goes in that window right there. Um, don't use it during the day, definitely don't use it right now. But that's how I heat the van up. I'll heat it um, before we go to bed, and you know, like 2 a.m., and then again when we get up. All right, I have one more thing that I'm going to show. I wasn't sure if I was going to show it or not. It's kind of unusual, but we have one other little animal that I want to show. I have some little quail in here, five of them. Are they not cute or what? All right, so the little quail, um, it's kind of like a little hobby. Um, you can eat their eggs. Their eggs are really nutritious, so they're just for eggs. They're not, I don't actually eat the birds. But I bought the eggs on eBay, and I put them in an incubator, and I hatched them. <laughs> and that's how I got them. Uh, so uh, when they do lay eggs, they're not doing any eggs right now, but they will again... Uh, they're just little bitty, little speckled eggs, and a lot of fun. But they don't take up much room. We just have five, and uh, they're enjoying being out here, getting some sunlight. And they saw some other wild birds, and they made some cool noises. But uh, that's the, that's all of our animals besides our our dogs and our cats. And uh, Shiva does the guarding. She stays outside most of the day. She likes it out here. She can lay in the shade and then she comes in at night and sleeps, but she still stills listening and keeping an eye on everything, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. We have an extra thing of water for all the animals. And uh, again, got the solar on the roof. Don't have them tipped up because we just went into town this morning and got a few supplies, but can have it tipped up to make even more solar so our camp has gotten quite a bit larger and like I said it's a little bit different so again uh, we have way more stuff than we normally would have had kind of was just thrown into our lap and we had to make the best of it and uh, so we are sitting out here with all these animals and plants and stuff and uh, um, you know, just trying to figure out what we should do next. It's a little bit too much work to continue to do month after month, but uh, we'll just see what other opportunities come up. And I uh, hope you enjoy the visit and the tour of my campsite and what we have going on out here. Um, thanks for watching, and I appreciate each and every one of you for watching our videos and liking them. And I hope you have a great day.